this chapter I am sure will be terrible. Okay? I'm gonna say it again. I'm tired of all the copers. Come at me. Me seriously. Last chapter was skippable, right? 16. Completely pointless. He's come lost in that. The Vega speed is just terrible, and it keeps telling me that you're going into the Attack of Titan route where the authors no idea how to, you know, connect and end the different twists and things and add more stuff, right? Last chapter was just terrible. He's kept adding nothing. This is so bad pacing. It's so bad rest, whatever. I mean, that more to be a rant video. No, but seriously, I haven't really said that, but I feel it's gonna be terrible. And no one's gonna be able to <laughs> disprove me because I'm honestly, I bet you 50 bucks this chapter also is terrible. Usually, it's called MO, it tells me immediately that Vega Punk won't be able to tell his speech, right? And I said this like four or five weeks ago that Vega Punk is the dumbest, smartest character ever, worth with the character in the whole manga, clearly. And the way he is telling the storyline doesn't make any sense. He knows that the Gorosai is trying to destroy him, you know, then the Mushu, right? Yet he's like, well, uh, well maybe, we're, just, just tell us the actual bit we needed. I'm telling you, this guy's gonna fail us to tell us now what we need to know, right? Because it's gonna be like, well, actually, you know, just tell us we need to know, Vega. I haven't even read it yet, but I know, obviously, for the set of names, it's gonna be a failure, right? It's so obvious, predictable. Anyway, yeah, best girl is there. Yamato, uh, you know, whatever, you know, eventually. Okay, uh, Pirate Island doesn't mean it's reading it, yeah. Um, it's obviously the treasure on the ocean floor, wouldn't they? Obviously, I saw that even before, it's obviously, but whatever. Then we see some mermaids. Uh, yeah, 200 meters down, but also the depth before, so. Um, yeah, then we see, Mon we see Norland. Yeah, I see more black. Oh yeah, back to the Dix Mining thing. Back to the Navy 5. The Corbis team. Okay, I'm gonna pass out. But I'll end later. It's hard to... Yeah, so we see the different Marines. They also react, of course. Um, sounds like we're gonna get some hard times. No. Yeah, we're gonna step up. And then we see uh, Drake also being like, we gotta step up, you know, put a sword. Then we see Smoker being like, we gotta step up. And he's also at the general soon. He's coming there as a cool Smoker bike thing. See, this is like three pages of, of useless crap, okay? Let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. I'm so tired of how terrible this man has become, right? And um, the thing is that. You know, I still want the manga to be great. I still want it to be the greatest story of all time. I want this to be the greatest story of all time. But you have to stop coping. These last maybe 10 or so chapters, especially this whole like speech thing, has been like the worst pacing we've ever seen in my life. i never seen a manga being this badly paced. And this anime right, is the worst anime pace of all time, always. So imagine when the anime gets here. Because this here so far, right, half this chapter is again skippable, right? But seeing everyone's reaction face again isn't good writing. I'm so tired of it. You gotta stop coping. This reaction are ruining the whole storyline. You can't have like Smoker, Kobe. You can't have all these different characters. Right? Oh, all right, we have to step up. Oh yeah. Like, who cares? Like who cares? It has no value. We all know that Smoke should be like, oh, I see pirates. Like, oh, Tashigi, let's go. You know, we all know they're gonna have that reaction. Right? This is not an. This is not an actual reaction. We all know that. I don't need to see this page of smoke being like, oh, parts are coming, I gotta fight them. I don't need to see that, right? I know it's a dude right now. I don't need to see some pirate, random pirates with no name, saying that, oh, they're a treasure, let's go there, whatever, yeah. I don't need to see that, right? And Uda has spent like the last probably 10 plus chapters now, did you? And I know it's like, oh, basically a meme by now, right? Saying that, oh, the reaction faces are ruining it and this thing. And it's something that's sort of probably popping up in Dressrosa and Forward. Uh, you know, when they were fighting Pika and so on, we saw everyone's reaction face. But the thing is that with Pika's reaction face, it was cool. It, it, it was honestly bad pacing there too, to some extent, obviously. But it was cool because everyone is seeing this amazing, cool sword technique, cutting up Pika. It looked badass, right? You know, so it was at least like cool in, in its sense, right? You know, the thing here is that this is they're just like this is not even like the reacting at it, right? They don't, they don't even have like whoa, it's just like. Just Smoker being like, yeah, I guess new pirates, you know, like, they're not even doing like a big reaction, they're not even seeing it live, they're just being like, huh, 
I guess it's gonna be more trouble in the future, you know. It's like a pointless, unemotional reaction from them. It is just really boring. It's honestly appallingly how bad it is. Like it's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I actually see the cope, man. I see the cope. People are gonna be like, no, but this is me, but it's not me at all. Uh, but uh, let's keep reading it. But yeah, I mean, genuinely, you can skip half the chapter immediately. Right? It's just like last week, uh, whereas two weeks ago, whatever who cares. Uh, um, I have been too weak at this point. Oh, you don't say. Yeah, I mean, this bit is so tab written. Okay, so back to waifu. Uh huh. Um, the cloud has stopped stretching. Okay, we should be able to leave the ship now. Okay, so they allowed the cola so they can use the cubes they can leave at least okay now something finally happening here here comes the gandhi here comes gandhi so i can attack them so i got gandhi versus solo clearly and they're yeah the ice is popping out here here comes solo no just stopping around bam okay find something happening after 10 pages solo is badass solo is better than gandhi there we go but seriously solo is like overcoming gandhi i mean straight up man this is like yeah like that is <laughs> yeah, but seriously, we got a power scale Soro now. This is the first thing that has anything meaningful in the chapter. And that is that, uh, yeah, Soro is like blocking Gandhi, man. That is uh, clearly, man, clearly. Uh, that That's the <laughs> good thing here. But I don't know. The, the Gorosa has basically been presented as really weak, but like super tanky. So who knows how to scale this thing. Because, yeah, that guy can... If he's like solar probably that's how you attack damage, you know what I mean? Like, it, like, it's a video game, in that sense, right? Imagine a video game. If it's like Gandhi would have lower attack than Soro, but he has higher defense, so... Soro probably can't hurt him, but he also can't hurt Soro, because Soro has high defense points, right? Something like that. It's just kind of weird how they... How they operate. Because they clearly been presented over and over again as just having, like, really high uh, death rate. But anyway, so, yeah, whatever. Soro... Yeah, and then they're gonna cook the burst, right? Uh, okay, so yeah, the run into the to the walking shape. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's the Atlas. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay, this is a pretty nice. I mean, this is a pretty cool double spread, though. You see a bunch of giants. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of giants. Umi, Kashi. They're like sinking the marine ships, right? Yeah, like <laughs> one of them has a well, yeah, one of them has like a bow and arrow. So obviously that arrow is like big on a ship or something. <laughs> yeah, they're working with uh, yeah, the elf buff guy with like a giant uh, archery. That's gonna be like that's gonna be pretty mean to them. Honestly, they probably should use more of that. Yeah, they should have more working dudes with uh, with bows, man. The archery, yeah, it's like shooting trees at them. <laughs> um, it's a good point. So, yeah, the Admiral, the White Admiral guy is like, okay, but they're, these are old pirates. They're how many is old, though? Um, but I don't know, honestly. I mean, wouldn't some of these guys also be younger, though? Like Umi and Kashir, all of them? Like, just like, you know, the old, are they all old Elbaf dudes? Wouldn't some of them also be old, younger, though? Like, they'd be picked up. I guess higher than, I suppose it's higher than mostly picked up the younger dudes. He got five members of his crew, right? So he's like four or five with him. So I guess he's he's picked up maybe the four younger warrior ladies, kind of thing. Yeah, I suppose so. The lads, whatever. Yeah, he's one waifu, uh, whatever. It's a pretty good image there. See them all come together, and then we see the other white admiral, like the old lady white admiral. There's some power. What's her power actually? Hmm, laser. Yeah, laser. But really, I guess she just punched. I don't know. She just punched something. Little actually I'm not sure she did here. But yeah, I guess she punched a hole in the ship or something. Oh, here comes uh, uh, Admiral, yeah, what's about Doll though? Best wife, you know, yeah. Doll comes in here. Yeah, she's obviously Garp wife. <laughs> yeah, she's like, rock and roll! <laughs> yeah, she's trained by Garp, man. She goes up there. <laughs> man, that's the best thing with this whole arc now. It's Admiral Doldo, yeah. And Vice Admiral wife, man. Doll is like, yeah! <laughs> he goes in there and he beats him up, man. Yeah, Doll is like, I get you, giant! Yeah, she obviously is a Garp, man. She's basically his wife of Garp, to be honest here. She's Garp, she's Garp with titties. <laughs> yeah. She goes in there like, bam, 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 bam. I got you, giant. Um, and everyone is like, "Woo, yeah, Vice Admiral Doll." <laughs> Everyone's like, "Yes, best Vice Admiral." Uh, of course, but yeah, she's obviously like Garp, man. She's trained by Garp, right? Uh, 
But yeah, obviously the Gores are left to destroy. He's he's left to help them to destroy the giant robot. The Earth Golem from Wild Arms that Oda obviously stole. Okay, so Vega Park like I have one last message. There's no way he's gonna test message because it's bad writing, he's gonna not do it. And then I guess it's Vano actually would listen to this thing. Um Yeah. Okay, he recognizes the Iron Giant that attacked 200 years ago. That is not a thing too widely that attacked 200 years ago for. Yeah, so he's, gonna t he's gonna do a D thing, right? And of course, Uda is gonna not tell us about the D thing. Yeah, then we see, you know, whatever. Yeah, Sabo and yeah, Drake. Oh, Blackbeard. Beppo, of course, with Law. And then we see, uh, yeah, but they're gonna destroy it, right? I mean, honestly, I don't care. I mean, I'm dead inside. Um, yeah, it's over. Yeah, so among you, there is a traitor. Yeah, among us. I mean, honestly, yeah, it's like the last thing says more, so it's like traitor, right? Um, honestly, it feels, it's so bad writing. Uh, he, Uda has failed so much, I just don't feel anything seeing Vegapunk fail this, right? And I said it earlier, so I keep saying it, right? Vegapunk's, um, the way he's talking is so incredibly slow. The way he's presenting these facts, right, that are so important to know, that he has to die and have this, like, super sick and deadly mushy. Yet he's like, well, let me, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's, he's so incredibly slow saying this thing. And, of course, as soon as he's mentioning D, that's the same moment when the Gorosite is, you know, he destroys the deadly mushy, right, you know? It is incredibly predictable. We all knew it was going to happen, right? But it's also just really boring. I mean, how many chapters has Uda spent for nothing, right? Last chapter was completely pointless. This chapter is also pointless. Because the only thing we learned is that among you there is something, right? Might be a traitor. Might be someone with the powers or whatever. It's just yet another plot point he throws out there, right? But it doesn't really add anything. This is incredibly, like, very vague foreshadowing. And honestly, it is such a bad thing to do because this is incredibly too big. So Uda can just add anything to it, right? People are going to be like, oh my god, foreshadowing. No, it's not good foreshadowing. Because this is so, this is too vague to be actual good foreshadowing, right? It might be a fake D or a traitor D. I mean, it, it can mean so many different things. The word, it's so many words that can fit there. It's just not good foreshadowing. It's terrible foreshadowing. It's too, ov it's too open, right, for interpretation. And it took us like three chapters to get here of no pointless. I call this chapter to be terrible, and you gotta you gotta stop coping, guys. You gotta stop coping seriously. This is like full on copium. You think it's a good writing? Uh, and I mean, this whole chapter is just bad from the beginning to end, right? Uh, you, in the beginning, nothing happens, right? You have you can you see reaction faces. Half the chapter, you know that is like who cares. Uh, someone told me Gim was gonna be in the chapter. I don't see him anywhere, but I don't really don't care at all, honestly. But yeah, someone told me that, but I don't see him. Um, you know, and then we see Gandhi and Solar blocks him. That's like the only action we get. Uh, yeah, and then he, you know, prolongs the storyline to super long. The Viking pen is pretty good, though, visually standpoint. That's yeah, pretty good. The anime we probably made this fight with like the giants and dolls are pretty cool. Then we can see the other like uh, Vice Admirals do cool stuff. So that could be pretty nice from an anime standpoint, adding more to the actual fights. Uh, you know, and then the Earth Golem gets, uh, yeah, destroyed or whatever. But it, I, I want to say, I just feel anything. It's just like, you know, I, I keep coming back to it, right? But it's just that it's just so predictable. Uh, I always said a thing, right? For example, when I complained so much about Gabby, right, in the fact that is that uh, I was so obvious to me that Gabby would do what she did, right, immediately. When I saw Gabby her first chapter, I immediately did call out what she was gonna do, right, you know, because bad writing. Ishiyama is a terrible character, right, to do anything. She's incredibly bad writing, like, on good characters. Um, Ishiyama is, I've said it before many times, but he's basically very good at writing the world, right, the lore, he's good at coming up with the ideas of like, the, the, the Titan, the giant thing, something, and then there's some mysteries, some photo, it's very good at like writing like the general like that you know that this is the lore but the actual like dialogue especially in the characters the characterization the personalities are terrible yeah you know because it's terrible you can't well, yeah, well, yeah. um so i immediately knew that what well, he obviously gonna fail with this gabby character right? i was like well, he can't write the character so she's here to you know do x thing right and it was obvious 
Vegapunk is, is the same way, right? Vegapunk is just a, he's, a, he's a Gabby of he's a Gabby of One Piece. Yeah, he's a Gabby of One Piece. He's there as a plot object, not as a character. He's there just to like tell us all these plot points, right? Whoever is incredibly badly paced. Honestly, I think it's better than this thing. Yeah, even how incredibly bad Gabby is written, it's actually better than this thing because, yeah, Vegapunk is so so slow, right? Having a character telling you in the absolute slowest way possible, telling you these incredibly important secrets when he knows that it might be stopped at any moment, yet he keeps telling it to slowly, and of course, it's interrupted before he can tell us the truth. It is so bad writing, it's not good at all, it's just very predictable, very forced, it's just like, you know, it's Uda is failing so massively, and I keep saying this thing over and over again, the Vegapunk is by far the worst character that Uda has ever written, I've said it for like a year now, not only for this chapter, I've said it almost immediately, right? Um, my hate the Vegapunk is of course very deep, it obviously stems from the very clear issue that he's, he's incredibly smart, in a sense of magic, right? He basically can he can invent like a microwave or something. So he's like incredibly smart, but not actually because obviously he's very very stupid in everything else, right? Which of course doesn't make any sense because if you're actually very very smart, people are smart in more ways than one, right? If you actually ever spend time with an intellectual person, right? Like some people with PhDs or whatever and so on, they are very very smart in almost every field. Okay, the whole idea that this like one person, oh this guy has a PhD in physics and then have to be going like Sheldon Cooper or whatever and have no skills. No, it's the opposite, okay? These people are very, very smart. The whole the whole idea that people with high IQ are bad at X thing, no, it's opposite. They might not care or whatever, right? But they're very, very good at whatever, stock market, this thing and that thing, because you know it's all like, you know, science or patterns, right? Having high IQ it basically means you can use predict patterns, right? So if you meet like a scientist, say a rocket scientist with very high IQ, they're also going to be very good in stock market, for example, because it's the same thing, right? And basically, from bottom level up, right? So no, 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 they're very good at other stuff as well, not just this one item, right? Um, the whole notion that smart people that we see in movie and so on are also bad at everything else is just really stupid. The reason why, of course, is because Hollywood, especially believes that uh, smart people are too intimidating, right, if they're, of, if they're actually smart. So they have to have all these, like, faults, right, you know, they have to have terrible personality traits and only be good at one thing, right, you know, which are very good at. Um, so the problem with Vegapunk, of course, is that Vegapunk, he is the smartest character ever in One Piece, right? He isn't just smart, he's, like, you know, godlike, super, super intellectual, right? Yet, he is so incredibly bad at everything else. And that doesn't make any sense, right? Because if you're the smartest person on the planet, you obviously will figure out what the other guys are doing. You play the moves, you will basically have uh, something like, uh, it's not in the movies, but, um, you know, someone with really, really high intellectual IQ, right, or so on, usually have basically clear violence, right? Clear violence. You can, you can basically predict stuff happening, which is so obvious for you, right? You, know, you can see all the patterns, right? And, except for a character like Dr. Reed, from Kingdom of Minds, He's taking a lot of issues, which I think is terrible. He's better with the character, but at least they got that point out of him. He's very, very high IQ, so he uses his ability to basically predict, you know, who is the criminal by seeing patterns of like water and rain and everything. He's like, oh, this thing happened, blah, 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 blah. And that thing actually makes more sense to his character. Than but yeah, he, he probably could do it, right? Print all this stuff, you know. Um, so Vega Python having like, you know, Vega Python has like a billion IQ, right? Yet he's. Prediction skills are zero. That doesn't make any sense. You can't have a character that's able to like invent nuclear power basically. And then the bad guy, you know, Yorkton, I guess, takes it immediately after he invents it, right? The next day, basically. He's like, oh, how could that happen? I mean, that's so stupid. Obviously, if you're intellectual enough to invent nuclear power, you will understand that people will steal it from you. Right? I mean, like, he's, he's, he's so dumb. I hate Vega Pack so much because Uda clearly has no idea to write smart characters. He's never been good at that. But Vegapunk is just the absurdest of the absurd. He's the worst written smart character ever in, in history of fiction. Uh, and, and now having him as this like, plot object, right? You know, he's so bad. Everything is terrible. And it's just going to be worse now by also having him be so incredibly slow paced. It, it is just. Oh, he's so bad, man. And he's so predictable. We all know he's going to fail. We all know he's going to say anything. And, you know, maybe the worst thing I feel with the challenge. Is that Vegapunk also basically acts the opposite of scientists, smart people? Honestly, right? 
I spend all my days, right, with people that have PhDs and they're smart and people, right, with really, really high IQ as well. But all my days with people, right, you know. And if anything, they're the opposite of Vegapunk. It's so, so easy. Because smarty professor dudes, in reality, they tell you basically immediately everything. Yeah, they're like, oh, this is, this is, this is, oh, you beat me. You want to beat the rocket? Yeah, they're basically like that, right, you know. It's like slow them down. Like, oh, no, 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 yeah. They're the act the opposite of Vegapunk. The more they know, for them, it's trivialized, right, you know. So if yeah, if Mega Pop was a real person and actually was a smart person higher IQ, he would tell you immediately what the D is. He would tell you immediately about Joy Boy and the water, and he would throw out. He would speak really quickly, like super fast. He would tell you all these things, and it, it wouldn't be this like opposite order of, oh, let me tell you a story about an event. No, no, no. Smart scientists do. They basically they tell you immediately. This is the facts. This is what I want. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah. Of course, I'm generalizing, but it's kind of fun that the Vega Punk, like straight up, acts as the opposite of the typical IQ, high IQ president. Yeah, he's like he's like the reverse of a smart person. That's how badly written he is. Because no one passes the Vega Punk. Uh, yeah, we go to these conferences. You know, I spend like I say, I spend all my days with people like Vega. Like, I mean, people that actually are smart. You know, all day. You know, it's eight hours per day. You know, all the time. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, and no one is like Vega Punk whatsoever. He's the most unrealistic smart character I've ever seen in my life. Like he doesn't make any sense. Uh, the way he talks, the way he sends stuff, he's just quirky, you know. It's so bad. It's so incredibly stupid. It's so irritating seeing Mega Punk. He's the reverse of the ex smart character, man. Uh, and everyone that is like smart will know that I have to tell you the important stuff first, right? So basically they tell us the water is, you know, the water is sinking. They will start immediately, and then they will explain why, you know. Typical scientists will tell you, this is the problem, let me explain why afterwards. Right? But they will tell you the key notes immediately. If you go to any, like, scientific conference, basically, they will tell you, here's my PowerPoint, here's the, here's the key notes, this, 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 and this. Now let me explain to you why, okay. So, uh, Blackbeard is lying, this is true, actually, this is thinking, this, blah, blah. Here, now let me explain to you how it works, you know. That's how it works, yeah. Vegapunk is doing the reverse, right? Vegapunk genuinely is like the opposite of an actual scientist. Vegapunk's behavior is actually the opposite of an actual high IQ individual. Like I said, I spent all my days, all the time, all my, I spent all my time working. I work in like the country's highest like laboratory facility of smart geeks people, right? And no one is a Vegapunk. He's, a, he's the opposite of that. He's like the reverse of a smart person, how they behave. He, he's the worst written smart dude ever. It's so pathetic. It does me crazy. Anyway, rant over, but I truly, truly hate Vegapunk, and this chapter proves how all I can write him out. It's just a bit pretty boy. He's, he's just the worst Gabby. Printability, whatever. Maybe he's I don't care, man. I mean, so bored of the thing. It's just so frustrating. And I can't believe people are going to cope over this as always. It's so crazy. Anyway, so you guys have a great day.